And we're back. Welcome to Kanye West Rank, the series where we rank each song off of Kanye West's various albums. Today we're going to be taking a look at Kanye West's unreleased discography. Kanye West has one of, if not the most extensive, unreleased or otherwise unofficial discographies of any musical artist. With projects including, but certainly not limited to, nor in any exclusive order, Love Everyone, Yandi, Rule Winter, Jesus is King 2, Thank God for Drugs, God's Country, So Help Me God, Donda with Child, TurboGrafx 16, Jesus 2, Freshman Adjustment 1, 2, and 3, Man Across the Sea, Donda 2, Good Ass Job, Versions 1 and 2, Winter, Spring, Summer, Fall, Welcome to Kanye's Soul Mix Show, Wolves, I'm Good, Get Well Soon, Good Fridays, Swish, Late Orchestration, Donda's Boy, God Unwilling, Watch the Throne 2, Chirac, Waves, Record for Hype, VH1 Storytellers, War, Con the Louis Vuitton Don, and The Prerequisite. Now in this video we'll be taking a slightly different approach to our ranking system. Instead of ranking each song by album, I'll be compiling a top 10 list spanning the entirety of Kanye's unreleased discography. Otherwise, this series would basically go on forever. Before we begin though, I'd like to preface by saying that navigating unreleased music is not an exact science. Many versions exist of the same song as a product of their ongoing development. In some cases, unreleased projects can be partially, if not entirely, fan-made, and it can be tough to tell the difference. Information on these projects is also often very very limited. I'm just gonna do my best, so I apologize if I miss anything or, you know, get some information wrong. And as always, please understand that this is my opinion. So let's get started. In at my number 10 slot, I've got Flashing Lights 2. This song is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's an upbeat continuation of Flashing Lights from Graduation with some altered synth chords and lyrics. It was made during the post-graduation era in 2007 and was likely meant for the 2008 album Good Ass Job. This album was meant to be the fourth installment in Kanye's College Tetralogy. I think this song was even performed live a couple times if I'm not mistaken. It's a great continuation to an already great song. At number 9, I've got Spread Your Wings, and so begins the Yandi entries. I had a tough time placing a song at number 9. Realistically, it was between this, the Chakra, New Body, or the Storm. For the record, those are all songs off of Yandi. However, I decided to go with this one just because of how compact and finished it feels. Also because a number of the songs that I just mentioned have eventually released in some capacity on Jesus is King or Donda. In the case of New Body, I don't want to jinx anything, but I think there might be a high likelihood of that one releasing very soon. That line has the potential to age very poorly in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the production of this song. The sample pairs very nicely with the percussion and Kanye's very energetic flow. And this is one of the few songs off of Yandi with no features. And that's something to note coming from an album that is jam-packed with collaborators. And a fun little factoid for you, and this is the first unreleased Kanye song that I ever stumbled across, so that's pretty cool. At number 8, I've got 530. This song features one of my favorite Kanye samples ever. It was previewed during the short War documentary on Kanye's YouTube channel. I think it later leaked in its entirety in December of 2022. I'm not sure if it was meant to be on Donda 2 or War or whatever, I don't, I don't care. All of the leaks of this song sound pretty complete with finished verses. Just based on how recently it was uncovered and with how complete it sounds, I would say it has a pretty high likelihood of being released when compared to the other entries on this list. At number 7, I've got Heartbreaker. I love this track's production so much. I have no idea where this sample comes from, but it just works so well with that electric guitar. It once again stems from the 2008 Good Ass Job era, which only proves that this album would have been absolutely insane if it ever dropped. This song in particular is one of the more unfinished on this list, with a lot of Kanye's verses consisting of mumbled phrases. Still, the production and the pacing of the song warrants a place on this list. I think if it were finished, it would probably end up even higher. In at my number six, I've got City in the Sky. With six features, not including Mr. West, this song is absolutely packed. It somehow manages to not feel crowded though. The way that everyone's parts are sort of layered in, jumping in and out of one another, it makes for a really intriguing and beautiful listen. The production is super simple, but incredibly effective in my opinion. It almost sounds like the background vocals were recorded from the next room over, which makes for a pretty interesting effect. I also want to note Kid Cudi's feature. He doesn't sing a single word of English, but it still manages to be one of my favorite parts of the song. I feel like everyone on this track came together in the best way possible, and I just love it so much. Now in at number 5, I've got Can You Be. This one is certainly a favorite among Kanye fans, and I might even get a bit of flack for only putting it at number 5. It features a really complex and intense production. I'm telling you, first listen, those synth chords will put your hair on end. It is admittedly kind of all over the place when it comes to song construction, but that makes it kind of fun. I'm intentionally not saying what album this song is from because it seems to be an ongoing debate within the community. They can't seem to decide whether it's on Jesus 2, So Help Me God, TurboGrafx-X, or Swish. 
I should also mention, if you can say the name of this song, you now know about 80% of the lyrics. At number four, we've got Christian Dior Denim Flow. This song is like a group project where everyone did their part perfectly. The cello melody and the instrumentation is really unique. That's one you don't often hear in hip-hop. I always wish that more songs would use actual instruments in their production. The chorus consists of Kid Cudi, John Legend, Kanye, and Ryan Leslie all singing in unison. But I love that you can almost pick out everyone's voice in the chorus with it still feeling polished. The verses themselves are solid too, my favorite being Pusha T's. Yes, he's on this song too. Fun fact, the drums that are used in the latter part of the song are from the same sample as Drive Slow from Late Registration. When I first listened to this song, I knew the percussion sounded familiar and my Kanye senses started tingling. I think I might have a problem. And at number three, we've got Alien. I'm actually livid that this song never came out. I swear, you Kanye stands can hate on Cuddy all you want, but you can't ignore that the two have never made a bad song together. Ball don't lie. This has to be the best song off of Yandi, which is in and of itself one of the most potentially influential and iconoclastic pieces of media ever made by the man. Like Kanye was really in the studio thinking, this album has the potential to change the future of music as a whole. Make sure it never drops. It's just stupid. Now, for number two, we've got Never See Me Again. Don't ever let anyone catch you playing this song, or they will genuinely be concerned for your health. I'm just gonna rip the band-aid off. This is basically Kanye's musical stress. It was initially leaked around 2009 after the Taylor Swift VMAs incident, when Kanye was pretty widely hated by the public. Little did we know. The way this song is structured works to express Kanye's depressive mental state at this time. The instrumental is beautifully composed, but I would argue that it doesn't feel inherently sad. It isn't slow moving or quiet like a lot of sad songs tend to be. Instead, it features a quick moving, almost sloppy, descending piano chord progression. The feeling that this elicits is almost kind of hard to describe. The imprecise nature of the piano gives a feeling of disconnection and numbness, as if the lack of care put into it comes from knowing that soon nothing will matter. It is an absolutely haunting listen. And now, for a complete paradigm shift. At number one, we've got Mama's Boyfriend. This is one of the most upbeat and funniest songs that Kanye has ever made. This song is meant to be on the 2008 version of Good Ass Job, and eventually the supposed deluxe version of Twisted Fantasy. Of course, neither of those projects ended up coming out. In this song, Kanye chronicles the men that his mother dated while he was a child and expresses his hatred and distaste for them. The story that it tells is funny and personal, and I love every part of it. I listen to the song all the time, to the point where I could probably sing it word for word. I'd like to address this message to whomever was responsible for not allowing that Billy Joel sample to clear. I hope you understand that it's on site when I catch you. Kanye records. And that completes our list. Thanks for watching this edition of Kanye West Ranked. Despite now having covered virtually every corner of Kanye West's discography, we are still not quite done with this series. So consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you won't miss what's next. Thanks again, and have a good one.